You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ. And it's Darren. Centric card exit scam. Darren reports back from Arizona State University. All this and more on episode 248 here on Tuesday, April 3rd, 2018. In the traditional markets, we have gold up to $1,334. Silver's up to $16.43. Oil is down to $63.40. And- 47 cents of the Dow is down to 23,758 points in the 30 year U.S. Treasury yield is down to 3.012%. Thank you, Darren. In the crypto markets, Bitcoin Cash is down to $715. Bitcoin Segwit is down to $7,441. Ethereum is down to $406. Dash is down to $339. And Litecoin is down to $129. Now, just a reminder that we have videos, of course. Please subscribe to Neo Cash. Cash Media on YouTube, we have some, like, if you watch this episode on YouTube, you will have a very interesting uh, Easter egg, shall we say. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah the, courtesy of the Free State Bitcoin shop here in Portsmouth. There you go. Or in Portsmouth. And we won't say what it is. You have to watch the video to find out. There will be a small amount of contact that is only released on video, and this is more of the short format video promo things. Otherwise, you're still able to listen to the audio-only version of everything we produce. And Darren, welcome back. Oh, thank you. Thank you, JJ. I look forward to hearing about your travels, but we're starting off with some terrible news. The Centric Card exit scam has been caught by the SEC. Centric Card principals Sam Sharma and Robert Farkas have uh, been arrested this past Sunday and are facing federal fraud charges relating to Centric Card and the CTR token sale. The SEC notified Sam Sharma in mid-February that the company was under investigation. The next, uh, next, the bank accounts were emptied and the employees were fired. Now, I interviewed Sam Sharma last year during a test run of blockchain startup interviews. I had some listeners email me requesting a closer look, and I did what I could. But this is a perfect example of why we refer to these token sales as gambling. I don't know how they faked videos of working centric cards. Uh, or if they were faked, but it turns out they had no real involvement with Visa or MasterCard. Now, I don't know what the future holds for Centra, the card, the token holders, but I think you will only see more of this as pressure is put on the uh, put on last year's ICOs to produce a working product. Many ICOs and token sales have already failed, whether scam or not, and many more will fail. This underscores the very nature of cryptocurrency trading is that it's built on projections of future profits, not necessarily future products. And this is a very important uh, issue. So I did these interviews and I did an interview with Pay to- uh, Pay uh, 10X, which does have a card that is out there and, and working. I did an interview with Centra and I also did an interview with Monaco. All three of these um, credit card, debit card scenarios where you can spend your crypto. Uh, right now, the the pay card is still functional in some markets, but it has lost functionality due to the Wavecrest issues. Uh, Monaco, I still don't know if they have anything functional working yet. And now, obviously, with Centra, there's there's I don't know if there's anything. I don't know if if it's you know the entire company's gone. It sounds like that's potentially the case. Yeah, well, <clears throat> this seems like it's a little bit more than that, than an exit scam because the SEC is saying that uh, Centra had a uh, said that they had an actual relationship with Visa and MasterCard, and the fact was they didn't. Yes, so so. the SEC's issue is fraudulent. Basically, they they were making claims, in fact, claims that were highlighted in in the document, in the complaint, actually lists the Neocash radio interview. Um, And so some of this, obviously, some of the stuff he was telling me in the interview, some of the stuff that was on the website, and all of the sources we could find were were either fraudulent or just lying or fake or made up, something to that effect. Yeah, and there was also, they're accused of uh, um, uh, basically issuing an unregistered security. So <clears throat> that's right. also raised its head, too, that, that issue as well. So it's, uh, you know, once again, we are constantly, constantly advising you that this is gambling. Because even if, okay, so like pay, the, the, the token still works and, and the card still functions, but... The, you know the, the the market for the card is really small, and they're having a really difficult time getting Visa and Mastercard to work with them. It's not to say that they won't do it, but look at look at Monaco for example. Like that's still that's just as much of a gamble uh, as Centra at this point because there is nothing out. Right. So it uh, it doesn't it turns well turns out we don't have to wait long for the next potential exit scam. So light pay up and vanishes, leaving those. 
holding Litecoin wondering, why are we holding Litecoin again? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you're holding Litecoin. So Litepay. <laughs> I can tell you who's not holding <laughs> holding Litecoin. Right. So Charlie Lee uh, recently profited from a very fortuitous Litecoin pump at the end of 2018 as he sold all of his coins. Uh, he says that Litecoin is fine. And they just got a little too excited with this light pacing. Yeah, they just got a little too excited. I got to I gotta get out before you all did. Or, yeah. uh, Charlie Lee says he got out before you all did. He got out before you all did. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's very disingenuous that he says that it's uh, for a conflict of interest reasons. If, right. If there was a conflict of interest reason, it was much earlier. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he, he put out that letter about the conflict of interest after he sold all of his coins. <laughs> yeah. That's... I mean, yeah. uh, and then we, and finally, we talked about the Triple M Pyramid Scheme way back in episode 188. Well, Sergey uh, Mav- Mavrodi, the operator of the international scheme, has died of a heart attack in Moscow. The Triple M Ponzi Scheme system has been put into pause mode, leaving the points holders with nothing to do. So this is actually maybe the best news that could happen with that scheme is that hopefully it doesn't leave pause mode and no new people are brought into it. So we'll see what happens with that. But that's enough with the tragic news. On to some happier news. Darren yes. Tap. Yeah, so I, I, I hope uh, listeners will enjoy a little update from me. I'm back from Arizona. There we filmed videos for a blockchain course, which will be offered through Coursera and, and can be taken for free. Or you can take it for a certificate or eventually you'll be able to take it for credit at Arizona State University if you want to get a master's. I also uh, met with faculty to make sure the course is developed in a coherent way. We're we basically we're all signed different units, and uh, we want to make sure that the units that I write work well with the units that are written by other people. And the research effort is going well. You, you probably have heard about the Dash research effort that's going on. Um, so we're getting results from our uh, simulations. Uh, they are coming in slow, but they are coming. And we're getting very positive results when propagation speedups like compact blocks or X thin are being used. So, I mean, I think that's a big deal. When when Bitcoin was first coming on, compact blocks came out around the same time as uh, this whole <clears throat> debate was happening. And it and what our simulations are suggesting that you can support much bigger blocks just using compact blocks. And I expect some other propagation uh, techniques will be even better. So is this uh, so this is uh, block size on chain scaling sort of yeah, yeah. research. Okay. So so basically the the first issue is get propagating the block, getting the block around to everybody. So all of these techniques, compact X thin and, and graphene, uh, use the fact that most nodes know about most transactions um, already. So you don't have to send them those transactions again. You just have to send them instructions for how to build the block, and um, and so if you basically just send instructions how to build the block and we've got three different ways to do it um it's a the block can propagate a lot quicker the, basically you have to send very little data to to get these instructions across and then the other node can makes the block and can check that's the correct block and the proof of work is correct and all that good stuff so it's it's pretty amazing um so i also presented in phoenix at the blockchain security scalability and research initiatives I will also be presenting April 15th for Blockchain Fest. Uh, that's a little closer home. There I will discuss issues related to blockchain education, mathematics, and mathematics education in general. So, uh, yeah, Blockchain Fest, uh, I'm kind of excited. I'm going to go down to MIT and uh, talk to some people there and hopefully meet uh, some colleagues. And there's actually a, a, a chance for ASU to partner with some other universities. So that's, uh, that's really good. We're still working on that. So I don't want to say too much. Uh, JJ, I'm finding that the the, the fact that Bitcoin operates at a sta- stable Nash e- equilibrium, I'm finding that's a very important aspect of the air quotes blockchain. Uh, in fact, when people mention blockchain, there are several related topics that that are valuable in their own way. And when we're developing a blockchain course, we're not just saying this is a blockchain, this is how it works. We have We're bringing in all these other topics like the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm that's used in transactions. We're bringing in uh, how the networking works, how every, you know, there's a lot of different pieces together that go together to make Bitcoin. It's not just simply a blockchain. So I I think that um, blockchain is kind of being used as a buzzword, but there's really a lot of, lot of concepts that are all 
kind of put together. In fact, isn't the blockchain, isn't that just the result, the sum? <laughs> yeah. Right? The, the output of yeah. what happens through the protocol and all this other stuff that happens. Yeah. The outputs this, and that's the, the yeah. physical, and, I mean. That. And, and it's back to Plato's allegory of the cage. The blockchain is just the shadow of these other ideas that I think are actually more important. Um, and and uh, But anyway, so that's kind of what I'm... Uh, working with now, I'm investigating that train of thought and uh, seeing what I could say valuable about that. Nice. And I was also interviewed in, in Arizona for a documentary beyond Bitcoin that should be coming out soon. Excellent. So yeah, that's a uh, that's a uh, pretty. Uh, the, the, there's uh, three uh, three people from the from Bristol in the United Kingdom. They came over here. They interviewed me. In Arizona, and then they came up here and interviewed Joel, <laughs> and I, I I I got to see him last night as well on Monday. So, All right, well, good for Joel. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then I have a little uh, something to get off my chest, JJ. What's that, Darren? I'm I'm really kind of fed up with this cult of personality that's going on. Like you, you see it on Twitter, you see it in other things, and first it was Roger Ver. He's not that big of a deal. We did interview him on Neocash Radio, and that. You know, definitely should check that out. But I don't think he's that big a deal. He just has money and chooses to gain, engage in speech. And I don't think anything he really says is that provocative or anything like that. I mean, some people take it as provocative, but, you know, he just says, this is what I prefer. And, you know, since he has a, 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 a media outlet, basically, he uh, can get his ideas into other people's heads. Now Craig Wright is trying to create his own cult. And th- and this is different than Roger, because Roger just seemed like he engaged in proper marketing. But Craig Wright is just being weird. Uh, recently, Vitalik Buterin has called out Craig Wright as a fraud. Vitalik calls Craig Craig's recent work uh, disputing selfish mining and, air quotes, uh, proving uh, Bitcoin script is Turing complete as incoherent babbling. And I haven't personally uh, found time to review this work. However, the Dash team asked me to review an economic paper from Craig Wright. In that paper, Craig cited a famous equation from Keynesian economics. Uh, He then claims that a higher velocity of money, that's the velocity of money is like how often it trades hands, how often it's used, right? If you if you receive money and you hold it for two months and then you spend it, that's a lower velocity than if you receive money and spend it the next day. So it's just kind of in aggregate how, how fast is money changing hands. So um, uh, Craig Wright claims that the higher the velocity of money uh, would encourage a higher price of Bitcoin. So like if, if people are trading Bitcoin more, it would encourage a higher uh, price. But if you look at the equation from Keynes, it's not that hard to understand that the, the relationship is actually the opposite. It's an inverse relationship. The higher the velocity of money means price inflation, which lowers the actual value or price of, of Bitcoin or whatever, right? If, if, if the dollar all of a sudden starts trading hands <clears throat> all day long, you know, if you trade it three times in one day, um, you're going to see price inflation. And, and that's what the theory is. And, and it, we can say whatever we want with, about Keynesian economics. I think that equation is on pretty firm footing, um, although it's misapplied by Craig Wright. I personally w- wish to use cryptocurrency as an actual currency. That's kind of why I'm here. I want to use currency as currency. Uh, that equation of Keynes also has a term which represents the total size of the economy. Now, as the size of the economy grows, the currency used in that economy does become more ma- valuable. It's this factor that I would like to see grow. I would like to see the economy grow. Basically, it's equivalent of the gross domestic product, which we don't have in Bitcoin. But anyway, if a higher velocity means a lower price, I'm happy to support that. I'm happy to support something which leads to a lower price. Price is not the end-all, be-all. It's also, it is also the cause of that it is also the case that a higher velocity of money or velocity of whatever money you're using means that it has more utility, right? If you're able to spend it easier and it's trading hands often, you're going to have no trouble buying what you want with it. And that's utility. That's, that's um, you know, the use. You have a use case for it. Um, having and sustaining more utility will bring about long-term gains while a higher velocity will only have a short-term impact, so uh, let's st- let ideas stand on their own and stop following personalities, unless it's Neocash Radio, of course. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you for that, Darren. 
so yeah, I mean, Neo Cash Radio has it's been a lot since since Darren was was doing his stuff with Dash and in, in uh, Arizona. Um, we've had a lot of interviews, Darren. I don't know if you're aware of this, but Mark Warden sold his house for Bitcoin. Yeah, I did see that. That was that was pretty cool. So we we put out that interview, and then we had ten uh, tips for those uh, crypto rich. If you're looking to buy or sell a house. Uh, check that out. Uh, we had an interview with Jordan Crawford from Purse, and we have our own Purse affiliate link to Darren. Oh, great. So if people want to buy something on Amazon and support Neo Cash Radio, they can do so by using our Purse link, uh, which will be available in the blog show notes. And also something maybe closer to home for you, Darren, we had an interview with Troy Wong from Neptune Dash. He, he runs a company that basically just runs Dash Masternodes, Darren. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Is this, is this a publicly traded company? Or? That's right. It so, is? Yes. So he has a publicly traded company in Canada. It's on the Toronto Venture Exchange. Uh, when we were, did the interview, it was worth $0.27 cents, uh, a share. But so he has 18 Dash Masternodes. Wow. That, you should check out the interview. That really addresses a, a pretty big concern. Some some people that have done the uh, shared Masternodes, we don't, I mean, and that means not at the protocol level. It means somebody accepted Dash in, instead of other people, like in the place of other people, and they are running a Masternode and distributing the, the spoils appropriately. Uh, people that are doing that are a little bit worried because... Um, when people send their dash, the government might consider them to be a custodian of that. Right. And there's all kinds of regulations and everything that comes with that. But if you are a publicly traded company... I think they, this then, is dash they own. Then, Eight, yeah. This is the 18,000 dash they own. Okay. And and basically, they're just putting putting the dash back into the company. Yeah. So, for the so, monthly uh, so, yeah, payout. I, I think that totally makes... I mean, th- that seems like a good way... Um, it's not really to get around the regulations. It's a different way to abide by the regulations if you're um, if you're doing all the paperwork you need for an exchange and all of that. So uh, that that you don't you're not a um, you're not a custodian for anyone. So that's a right. that's a nice uh, little upshot of that. That's great. Well, one one note one takeaway from that interview is that the the climate in Canada for crypto companies is very friendly and you're seeing a lot of crypto companies that are becoming publicly traded on the exchanges there, the company itself. Uh, well, they're not necessarily token sale type companies, but they're involved with mining, they're involved with various other, uh, various other crypto uh, industries. So what maybe maybe Neocash Radio will have to investigate uh, that that uh, more anyway, and I have two more interviews on the editing room uh, right now. Oh, so great. I have a fun chat with Traven Keith about his history in the crypto space. So look forward to that this week. I also have a talk with Mario Costanz about crypto tax prep, which is very important, uh, especially now with all the talk of SEC yeah. and the F- CTFC and the IRS. And there's probably a lot of people that could use that because, I mean, you could wait for the IRS to give you guidance on all of this, but they never, they're not ever going to really try to save you money. And so if you have somebody that knows the ins and outs of everything, they can get the paperwork filed in the way that's going to save you the most money. Sure. Now, Mario put out a free book that people can download. It's a digital format free. You can buy it in paperback, but it will have some of the tips that he will give you. Uh, but he was also offering the tax prep service itself. Yeah, and so great. he you know, has noticed because he's been doing this, he's, he's been a listener of the show for a while. And so he's also been into crypto for a little while, and he saw this coming, and he prepared, started preparing for this last year. Uh, but he says that well, he's estimating three and a half million people in the United States are are probably going to file, including crypto, this year. But that you know, we'll see what the actual numbers are from the IRS. So I expect those this week, and we're putting together a special episode where Pedro and I talk about hardware wallets. For this and more, stay tuned to Neo Cash Media. We uh, also have some more changes. There's so many changes, and you're going to have to expect it. Changes are going to keep coming. more coming. So we have a new donation addresses on the support page, along with our purse affiliate link at neocashradio.com. And as we migrate to our new website, you will find it there as well. Uh, if you've ever wanted to support Neocash Radio or Neocash Radio, please donate generously. Yes. So yeah. So, so that's going to our payment processors because we're we're trying to make sure we do everything, uh, you know, on the up and up. So, you know, as far as the IRS and building a business, and we're going to put together a little bit of a special to talk to you about uh, crypto and business in the near future. Uh, but the final point to talk about, there's just so much, Darren, uh, yeah. the 300th crypto meetup 
uh, for Manchester, the longest running crypto meetup in the world, is happening this Sunday in Murphy's Tap Room, Manchester, New Hampshire. And the event starts at 6 p.m. And so you can buy your Dash beers with that. You can buy, uh, yes. So Murphy's accepts Dash and Bitcoin. That's right. Oh, when we went to the street last night, yeah. um, uh, my, my partner said uh, that uh, she wanted to pay in Dash. And she, um, and then the, the waitress comes over and she says, Now, did you want to pay with Dash and not Bitcoin Cash? Uh, so I think uh, the world's getting around that uh, which ones are the easier ones. Now, to use. Street, what is this you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, Street. Oh, yeah. So that's in Portsmouth. It's a, it's a really, it's just a restaurant, but the, the idea is they sell street food from all around the world. Hmm. And um, I've been restricting my diet a little bit. I was off the wagon in Arizona, but I'm trying to get back on. And so one thing that uh, is, is uh, acceptable in my diet is a burger without the bun i can't eat the bun and when i ordered it at street they basically made a salad and put the big burger there with of course it got cheese and bacon on it and um and so uh, my my partner called it a man salad so i'm like yes i'm gonna go there and get another man salad because it basically they serve it as a salad in fact on the receipt it says as a salad and um it, it you know if you're not having a bun or something they actually make it fun to, to order um, but they also, they, uh, you know, they just have street food around the world and they're, it's really good. And they have some local beers and, and such, you know, and, and the interesting topic as, as see, part of Neocash radio, and this is sort of the back, back end developer of, of a radio show or a podcast, if you will, is I'm like, I'm looking at different shows to do in different ways to, to get, uh, to get out there and of course monetize it and, and things like that. But, uh, and I've, I've been thinking about doing a keto cooking show. Oh, no. The Crypto Keto Cook Show. No. Come on. See, now you, I said they had local beers. You can't have that if you're keto. No, no, you, you can't. can't. No. No, but I've been trying the keto diet myself, and it's it's been really uh, interesting. I'm, Some of the- I'm, I'm finding, I think I was generally sick. And now that I'm, I had a healthy eating for a while and, and then went back to Arizona, I'm, like, I'm getting those same symptoms again. So I think I have to eat healthy <laughs> yeah and it's just it's just the way my body's structured and probably a lot of other people are the same way and and you know different diets work for different people but this one works for me so wow well there you go we, we you never thought we'd talk about diets on neocash so. radio but here we've done it yeah any content on the neocash radio podcast and our website should not be regarded as financial or legal advice please be mindful of any and all regulations regarding cryptocurrency in your particular jurisdiction never invest or gamble more than you're willing to lose and always safeguard your digital currency by keeping it a wallet whose private keys you control. For Neocash Radio, this is JJ. And this is Darren. Neocash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. Mm-hmm.